So backstage, Jillian, when you were introduced as an IMG model, you kind of gasped. You, it's like you can't believe it. Or yeah. what is, what's the I story? I mean, it's, it's, I think it's been four years now and I'm still like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm I'm an, I'm a I'm a model just the same as like every Victoria's Secret model. Like we're assigned to the same agency. Oh my God, that's crazy. <laughs> <You> <laughs> so it's still it's still a beautiful moment surprise there. We're gonna talk a lot about being a fashion model, um, how you got into fashion. First, I want to start off by asking you a little bit about muscular dystrophy. Can you share with us what what is it exactly? And how, how does it affect or not affect your life? Yeah, so I was diagnosed at a very young age that I had, um, mine personally specific is spastic muscular dystrophy, which it, it varies with everyone, but for me it's just a tightening of my muscles or my tendons. So there's times where I'm like nervous or like at a Beyonce concert and I'm like, oh my God, and then all of a sudden my tendons get like spazzed out. Um, that just like stops me from doing you know regular things um but it, it, it it's not that it necessarily stops me from every, anything i've just been really good at like meditation and yoga and relaxing mm. and just like being in the moment and letting it happen um and that's helped a lot yeah what are what are some of the misconceptions like you've done some crazy things yes what just, let's so many share. crazy things yeah what, <laughs> let's let's Share one. The or perspective. Two. Um, I've been to Burning Man. I know <laughs> anyone's been to Burning Man before, but my crazy self went. Um, and that was amazing. It was a beautiful experience because it was, if anyone doesn't know where, it's a festival really that happens in Reno, Nevada, in the desert. With nothing. In the actual desert. Mm -hmm. Not a fake desert. It's a real <laughs> desert that's like 120 degrees in the day and like negative 20 at night. Um, and I was there for seven days um, with this exact wheelchair um, in the sand. That's amazing. <laughs> so tell me, how did you get into fashion? Um, I always had fashion in me. Um, I don't know if you ever felt the feeling where you just feel like you belong in a scenario or in a, in a place or in a community. And I've always felt that when I was younger. Um, my mom was a seamstress, so she constantly took work home. Um, so sh I used to watch her uh, embroider baby clothes, so like the little flowers on baby clothes my mom did um, for hours and hours and hours. And instead of watching Peppa Pig, well, we didn't have Peppa Pig back then, but um, I would watch her sew. And my dad, he was a shoe salesman, so I knew a lot about crocodile and uh, crocodile and snakeskin and where leather jackets actually came from and all of that thing um, at a very young age and that always like fascinated me mm. with the colors and the designers and the fabrics but I didn't take it uh, seriously until I was in college I went to FIT in New York here um, for four years and I studied marketing um, and uh, I noticed there then how underrepresented my community the disability community was in the fashion industry we were just not existing whatsoever and knowing now that one out of five people have a disability, whether it's invisible or visible, was very concerning mm -hmm. <laughs> to realize there were one billion people out there and in the industry that I loved so much, I did not see myself. Yeah. And were you on the editorial side at first? Like, how, how were you discovered? I was, uh, so I was working with um, Tumblr. I don't know if you guys remember Tumblr. Um, it's like Oh, so 2008. Um, yeah. <laughs> Silent moment for Tumblr. But <laughs> um, I, worked on, I worked at their fashion division. Yeah. Um, and we had a, a release party. And that's where I met, their, at the time, the editorial director, Diesel. Um, and he was the first one who gave me a job. That's amazing. As a, a worldwide model for the face of Diesel. And yeah. it just went from there? And it went super viral. So then I understood. I, did, I still don't understand viralness, but wow, was that viral. Um, and it shook, I was shooketh when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it just, it, it blew out of the water because it was the first time that they had uh, someone with a visible disability in an ad done non-medically, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's um, crazy. And there was many people who would, oh, I didn't even know you were in the chair. My chair is super visible, if you see the ad. It's extremely visible there, but they, I guess the perception of the person looking at the advertisement 
wasn't looking at like a New York Presbyterian Hospital ad. It was looking at a brand that they actually wear. Wow. And they're like, whoa, this is really trippy and I've never heard of this before. And so that's where I began and yeah. I, I still had the passion of being an editorial, uh, editor, sorry. Um, but I knew that at that moment in time, I had to take on a different journey and you know, keep this conversation going and you know, I, I'm the kind of person that like, if an opportunity shows up, take it. And this opportunity was so golden that I was like, okay, girl, yeah. you got this. Now, I mean, you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing that Diesel came to you yeah. and you had plenty of others, Nordstrom, Target, yeah. I mean, a ton. Was the fashion world, though, welcoming at first? I mean, what, what were some of the challenges? See, because I'm a Dominican, by the way, and we are, and w as women, we're very sneaky sometimes. So I took the sneaky route and I studied my butt off in college and I did every internship you can find. So I was already in the industry, but mm. nobody knew I was in the industry. I was like a fly on the wall. You're stealth. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, <laughs> secretly wanted to be like a 007 girl from James Bond, so I kind of yeah, used that in the fashion industry. And, um, and I made my way internally first, so that when the, this happened, when the Diesel thing came out, people were already used to seeing my face at Fashion mm. Week or any party or event or whatever. But this was just like more for like the general public to see yeah. me, and, which is beautiful. And so the fashion... So yeah, so they were, so going back to your question, sorry. Yeah. So they were accepting because they already knew mm -hmm. my face and I do pretty gr great in social settings. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like one of my secret superpowers <laughs> um, um, that it was, they were accepting that way. Yeah. But there still needs, there's so much work to be done in the industry now, um, still. Were they accommodating though? See, that's where my Latina side comes in, because not so much. <laughs> um, thankfully, because I spoke up every fashion week in New York City, um, I can say I don't know about Milan or Paris or London, um, there will always be an elevator, there will always be an access, because there that's wasn't amazing. until I spoke up about it and I said, I'm not a chef, so I shouldn't be able to go through the back, I should be able to go through the front like everyone else. Yeah. Um, and because I did that move, they heard me and wow. installed the That's amazing. thing. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> so what? Uh, so what was your favorite shoot? Like what? You've done so many cool ones, and one I think um, was with Beyonce. Yes, that That's, still. That I mean, like hello. Beyonce. I mean, <laughs> uh, it's up there. It's pretty up there. She, um, it was myself and two other models. We were on her front page two years ago, I believe. And I was just like, wow, I've made it. Okay, I can go now. I can go. This is it. My life is complete. Um, I was her uh, face model for her uh, formation tour uh, merchandise. Um, wow. And that was trippy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, um, what kind we, of feedback? We've all seen Homecoming, so. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of feedback did you get from that? Um, amazing. Yeah. Oh, it was amazing. It was one because I was alongside, you know, the pretty much the most influential artist we have in our time right now. And the fact that she herself was like, you know what? She deserves to be here as much as everyone. Um, and because she understands that inclusivity and diversity is very crucial and important mm -hmm. and representation matters a million percent, like somebody can fight me otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, but she knew that. And to have someone so influential and so big and so powerful give me that opportunity, that just speaks for itself. Yeah. How do you define your style? I mean, do you have a certain look that you like to go after in modeling? Um, oh, I'm on, on like my clothing or yeah. like? Yeah, um, or, or just. I, I always like to push buttons in modeling, yeah. specifically like different editorials. I always like to push the narrative a little farther. Um, so, you know, there's, I just posted something on my Instagram a few days ago about disability and sexuality and how important that is and how we are very desensitized that it's not a thing when it's very much a thing. Mm -hmm. So I did a whole photo shoot with me looking very sexy, <laughs> um, pushing all the buttons. Um, so I, I, I always like to do fo uh, shoots or, or projects that are way beyond a photo. There's more of a conversation yeah. starter. It almost seems like you go for a very mod look. 
I mean, I don't know. Oh, yeah, like, oh, I mean, my, oh, oh, girl, my my style changes all the time. (laughs) I have pink hair, purple hair, you know, rock star, grunge, whatever. What What are you doing next? I mean, are you working on any other campaigns? There's a lot of cool projects coming. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure I can say. Can you, can you share a few? But I am, it's very, 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 very beginning stages, but I am writing a book, which I'm really excited about because it's pretty much me in a book and talking about how I got to where I got spiritually, mentally, and physically. Wow. Yeah. So what is, what is it like being a trailblazer? I mean, I don't what, know. It's a little um, pressure. <laughs> Do you feel pressure? <laughs> Um, it's a responsibility. Some mm-hmm. are, I think that we're all given things that we can handle, even if we don't feel like we can handle it. Um, they're there for a reason, and I think I was given this journey because it was bigger than itself, and I was able to, and I am able to, you know, talk about it and, you know, do it in its full potential. Um, but it's a huge responsibility to take because you want to make it right for the one billion people out there who have always been invited to the kick up but never had a chance to eat, so. And what does it feel like being first? And do you have peers now? I mean, has, has the, the new face of fashion grown? Yeah, so much. I mean, mm-hmm. we live in a beautiful time where social media connects us with everyone. Um, and we're able to shout our differences and we're able to make it known that we are here and we are present and our opinions matter. You know, it's not about the corporation, it's not about the CEOs, it's about the people who are actually going out there and buying. Like, we are the narrative and we should be able to speak on it. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's beautiful that I'm able to talk to, you know, people around the world who may have different, who may have differences, but we can all come together that we we all live in one planet and we should act like we do. Yeah. So what else is going on? Do you think that you'd get into entertainment at all? Like some models make that. Oh, totally. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I'm so here. I, astronaut, let's go. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm here to do anything. Movies, TV. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's another big issue. I think that the media has a really interesting tendency of hiring non-disabled actors to mm. play disabled roles <laughs> and just kind of screwing up our whole narrative. Um, to the point that we're so um, brainwashed about mm-hmm. what it is to live with a disability without asking a person who's actually living a disability. Are there any shows or any, any movies that do it, have done it right? There's that actually, you? yeah, I actually met the person who in this show, um, it's a Netflix show called Special, um, and it's so good, it's so good, it's yeah. so funny, yeah. and it's done so perfectly, and he, the main character actually has CP, mm-hmm. and he plays the person who has CP, which is, Amazing, and until we don't get that right, I think no one's allowed to play a role yeah. if you don't, yeah. if you're not that person. So on the on the activism front, mm-hmm. um, what what are you are you literally active on the activism oh, front? A hundred percent. Okay, it's what are you doing? It's the point where I, like I post so many things on my Instagram yeah. that I'm like, oh my god, now I've become this person. <laughs> like I'm AOC now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I think it's crucial, I always say, when you have a big platform, when you have yeah. audiences mm-hmm. staring at the screen at what you're going to do next, I think it's important to take that opportunity and you know, talk about the things that actually matter that can affect thousands of mm-hmm. people. So I'm very vocal. Like, I will fight you. Like, I will fight you Watch on out. social media <laughs> if you come after you me. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I tend not to fight people. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, but I am. I am very active on social media when it comes to activism and okay. especially women's rights, disability rights, and being yeah. Latin in this country. And what, um, what kind of advice would you give to women here that are blazing trails in different ways? Um, what was any good advice that you got that you wanna share? Yeah, um, I think the best advice I've, I've ever received is to be very patient and very persistent Um, because if you're not patient, you will lose yourself, and if you're not persistent, you'll never get there. So that's the biggest advice I can give anybody, and that has worked for me as well, because I am the most patient person you can ever, ever (laughs) meet, (laughs) ever, and it's gotten me to where I am today. Excellent. Well, enough from me asking questions. (laughs) I want to open it up to the audience um, for a few minutes. Um, Would anyone like to ask a question? Okay. Please. We're, we're going to get you a mic. Oh, so, 
<laughs> yes. We want you heard. No, I'm not a <laughs> um, was there a time when you felt something had happened and you just felt so challenged in what you were trying to do that you thought there's an easier path, let's just do that instead of constantly bashing my head against a wall? Yes, I mean, I think we all have those moments when you're, tr when you're trying to do something so apparently out of the norm that you get hit with these walls and you're like, oh man, if I just turn to the left, I'll get there quicker, but it, my story won't be told in the way that I want it to be told. But if you turn to the right, it's gonna take me a bus ride, a bike ride, a ferry, uh, a, a plane ride to Timbuktu until I get there. And I, honestly, I always choose that route because at least my story is being told through me and not through someone else. But yeah, those challenges come like every single day. You just have to be persistent in knowing that you're going the right path through what like your heart says to do, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Um, hi there. Hi. Um, I follow you on Instagram. Oh, cool. It's gorgeous. I'm oh, obsessed. Thank you. thank you so much for being here. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> you know, one question I had is I would assume for every Jillian Mercado, there's a million more that we don't know about mm -hmm. in this room. I would love to hear, like, who else from an advocacy perspective, from a modeling perspective, from an IG perspective, who else should we be following and engaging with? The first person that came into my mind because I'm obsessed with her and now we're friends, so yay. Um, is this girl named Nora, N-O-R, and she gives me such a perspective of what it is living as a journalist and being Muslim as well, and oh my gosh, she's literally not only gorgeous, like scary gorgeous, and you're like, what, are you an alien, what's going on here, um, but she's very informative as far as like what it is being her and living, you know, her truth and her journey. Um, there's also another amazing disability activist called Mama Cox, um, literally M-A-M-A-C-A-X. -A -A she's amazing, she's an amputee, um, and she's my sister because I love her so much. Um, but she also gives a narrative and a storyline of what it is being her. And she's from Haiti, so she's like my sister country, which makes it kind of cooler. I'm Dominican, she's Haitian, so it's like, um, but she's in somebody else that I follow. Pretty much, honestly, everyone that I follow on my Instagram is somewhere or another an activist in their own field. Um, and you have to follow people that will uplift you because if you keep following people that don't, you'll just end up in a whole trap. You don't want to get there. <laughs> so yeah, that's a good question. Anyone else? I think we're yeah. good. Oh, wait, yeah. one in the oh. back. Hello, um, I'm also a huge fan. Uh, how has your background, because I'm a black girl, so I, yes. I know how it is, especially with families of color. <laughs> how has your background definitely helped to propel you to where you are today? Because I know as being a woman of color, we have so many battles that we have to fight. And so I can't even imagine the type of battles that you have to fight as well on top of being a woman of color. So mm -hmm. just can you just explain like how that has helped you to, re to, you know, to reach the point where you are today? So it's a great question because that happens all the time and then you end up in a room and you're like, why am I the only person here? Although there's like 60 people there. You're always the only one. And I feel like that's always been me in some way or shape or form. Um, luckily, I use what they call weakness as strength. So the f I'm loud. And so if I don't see someone in a room that's like me or I can kind of relate to, I make it known that I, uh, this, is not gonna, this is not gonna end well if I'm the only one here. Um, and <laughs> there's like a billion people out there and how am I the only one representing you know, my community? Um, so, I'm, so yeah, they, people might say I'm too loud, but I'm just trying to help my brothers and sisters out get further along. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. I think we're out of time. Um, please join me once more in thanking Jillian for coming today. This is awesome. Thank you. This is fun.